Stop it. Good morning, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In today's episode, we are gonna take a look at React Context. Now, if you don't have any context of the situation, that's okay. I'm gonna show you what it's about now, Winky. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Just basic React 101 here. Uh, well, if you if you need basic React 101, I just did a video last week, and it was like two and a half hours long about React and everything that needs to be. So you better watch that right now. That's the came up. That came a bit across a bit aggressive. I'm not gonna lie, but okay. So what's context anyway? Because I haven't covered context and I wanted to. So we, I put together a little boilerplate project here, which looks like a scam website for a clothing shop. Um, we put this together yesterday. We wanted to keep it very simple, so that's why we have icons of t-shirts. How fantastic! code's gonna be on github if you're interested but i just recommend really watching along to this video uh, to get a good understanding of context and then try to apply it to your own projects okay fantastic okay let me just show you kind of the code it's really simple let me close everything up so essentially i have three components that we need to worry about okay a nav which is this uh a products which is this and a checkout page, which is this, all right? All quite empty. Uh, and I just hooked up React Router, so literally just importing link and routes. And when we go to slash, it's gonna display the products, and when we go to checkout, it's gonna display the checkout. So our nav, again, is very simple. It's just linking us back home, and here it's just linking us to the checkout when we click on this. And we have a span there with a zero to display the items in our cart. Okay, and then our products. I literally just made an array here with a price and a name, and I'm outputting a card uh, right here. Okay, which again, just holds a name and a price, and it's just a bit of styling added to it, and that's it. Okay, so here's the thing, state, what's state? Well, state is essentially kind of like a variable, a container that holds some kind of data about your website or application. Uh, the cool thing about these frameworks is state, when state changes, so when your data changes, your UI reacts to it, okay? So in our application, let's say when I wanna click on this uh, card button here, I wanna update the number here in our nav to one, two, three, or whatever, how many we add. And also the checkout page should display all the items here. Okay, so the way we do that is we go over to our card here and every time we click on the card, we'd save its name and price, all right, which I have available in this component. Okay, so that can be done easy. So let's just say, we end up saving it. I'm just gonna make a variable here. Uh, let's say we save the item to the cart and set this equal to uh, just an object. And we have the name of it saying t-shirt, right? And a price of it saying $20, okay? The problem is there's no way for me to send this information from here all the way over to the checkout page and display them all down here. Or maybe I want to go to the nav and update uh, the number here based on how many items I have in this array. All right, well, it's an object now, but we can make it an array like that. All right, so there's no way of doing that. So here's our structure basically that we have. We have our app, right, which is our big daddy component that holds all of these other small components which is nav, products, and checkout, right? These three. And products page also displays a bunch of smaller cards. So product page is basically apparent to these smaller ones, okay? So if I have a shopping bag that holds this state here, there's no way for me to send it up here or across to all of these different components. So one thing that you're gonna see online is something called lifting up the state, um, which basically means move the state from one of these inner components up to a parent one. And if you do that, then you can pass down the state via props to the smaller ones, okay? So even from here, if I, let's say I, I have this data, all right, let's, even if it's a variable, that's fine. It doesn't necessarily need to be a state. So just like, like const item. 
okay? Set to zero. There's no way for me to send this to any of these components down here. So what you need to do is, if I take this from here and move it up a level to products, so here, well then I can send it down to my card, right? So if we look at the structure, I can send it from here down here. All right, so whatever you're basically rendering out in that component, you can send down. So in this case, we're already sending down the products here, right? Name and price via props, and then you can render them out uh, if you import name and price here, and then you can just output it like that. But again, even at this level, you cannot share this shop bag across nav and checkout. So what you do is you move it up again to our app component. So if we cut, cut this out and just move it up to the app, well, look at that. Now in app, we're rendering out all of these. So I can just go here, and if I wanna pass it in nav, I can just say item, and pass now item, and then I'll have it available in props. And I can do the same to products and to checkout. The problem is that it's not necessarily bad, but let's say you have a bigger state and you have all of these different functions. Let's say you add item, right? And this is gonna take in a name and a price. All right, and what I wanna do is just take this item here. This is just a silly example. I wanna add I want to, let's say, set item, whoops, and I want to pass in the new item with a name and a price. Just, this is not real code, just as an example. So where do I have this name and price available? Where well, I have it on each individual card. So what you'd need to do is take this and then pass it down to products here, and then from products, uh, import it up here in props, and then pass it down to the actual card, and then in the card, you can use it if you import it here, right? You'd have add item, and then here we have name and price available. So then I can do an on click, and then, uh, well, add item and can pass in the name and price, right? So you'd have to do all of this drilling and going down, 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 and props and props and props. And if you have a lot of functions, your app JS is also gonna get bloated with a bunch of crap here, which is not, not that nice. So solution for this, rather than moving the state all the way up to app, um, you'd move it completely away from all of these components into something called context, all right? Which you can imagine it's its, it's own little place um, in your application, or its own little world. And once you set this up, any component that needs the shopping bag information, you can just simply import it. And that's it. So here you can have a data and you can also have the functions to modify this data. And yeah, you just literally import it anywhere you want. That's the basic premise of it. So let's set this up and see how it works, shall we? Yes. Um, so I have a little error here, so excuse me. Let's just, that's because this prop doesn't exist. It's a Fugazi. Okay, there we go. So again, what we want to achieve here is when we click on one of these, I want to update the cart and also the checkout page. So what you do is you create a cart context JS uh, in your source folder, and then we're gonna we're gonna import create context and also use state. All right, so we can actually use the state here rather than in a specific component. All right, and then what you do is you create this cart context. So you're just invoking this function that they give you essentially and saving it to a variable. Oh, let me name this cart context like that. Okay, so you're saving it to a variable here and then we can export it as well. Cart context, export default cart context. Okay, cool. So now what we need to do essentially is create one more function and we're gonna export this separately called cart provider. So what we do with this is essentially we'll add the data in here and then let me just write it out because it's gonna be clearer. So it's gonna take in the prop called children and then here we're gonna return cart context dot provider like that. 
and make sure we wrap this into just like a component card context not provider and close that up and in here we're going to render out the children and this also takes in a value i'm going to just set an item here saying one okay so let's go through all of this so what this card provider essentially does is any component that we wrap around is going to have access to this value that we have here this data and again this data can be anything in our case it's going to be our our shopping bag our shopping basket okay and children basically means is a prop that react gives you uh, it represents basically all the components that that is wrapped around this card context provider. So again, card context dot provider essentially is literally provides the data to its children uh, via wrapping them around. Okay, so all we need to do is take this card provider and wrap our application around it. So let's go to our app JS. Let's import cart. Make sure you use curly brackets here. Cart provider from dot slash dot dot slash what is it dot slash card context okay and so again wherever we want this item one to be available in we just need to wrap it in this case i want it to be available everywhere in my nav and my products checkout so i'm just going to wrap my whole app around it so i'm just going to go here and say card provider cool and that's all you need to do to have access to that data. So now in any component that you wanna use this item, you just go to it and you need to import the file, card context, and also something from React called use context from React, okay? And to extract that item data, all you need to do is say const curly brackets item equal to use context and then you pass in the context where you want that data to be extracted from in this case card context because remember you can have multiple ones of these you can have a card context maybe you have a user context okay that holds user information uh, so you can module mo how do you say that word modularize it modularize that's the one i got the approval modularize it and just have it in separate small little files different types of data okay so you can organize them the way you want it to but that's essentially it you extract it say use context and the context you want to use and that's it if we console log out item and hit save and let's take a look in the browser oh no we have an error it says create context is already declared where in card context oh it imported it twice what a silly goose hit save let's take a look now inspect console look at that we have one so we have that data available here so if i want to update my cart here to one i can just say item and look at that it works how awesome is that okay but let's build this a bit more practical so i'm going to set this back to zero i'm going to remove this i can keep these in here because we're going to use it eventually um let's go here and rather than doing this whole shebang here uh we're gonna use a state here so i'm gonna say const items and set items i'm gonna set this equal to use state and it's going to be an empty array where we're going to add different objects so let's also make a function in here you can do whatever you want add to cart and this is going to take an, a name and a price okay run an arrow function and essentially what i want to do is set the items and i'll get any previous state that i have in here and i'm just going to push in if Basically, if there was something in this array already, keep it there and then comma, add a new object to it with a name and a price, all right? There we go. So I just made a little function here that pushes a new object every time we click on something. Okay, so rather than having item one displayed here, I'm gonna actually use the state. So I'm gonna pass in the state here, items, and I can also pass down the function if I want to, to use across my application. 
and that's that. So let's say I want to go here to my nav, right? And I want to output basically the, the length of my array, which currently is zero. So let's just see if it works for now. Let's go here and say const items equals to use context card context. What I want to do is rather than output five, one or something, I want to output it dynamically by saying items dot length. All right. So our array is empty now, so it's going to output zero. We have an error. Let's see what that is. Object is not iterable. Oh, this needs to be curly brackets like that. Okay. So whenever you extract something, from this card context, because I have it trapped in curly brackets here, make sure you use curly brackets. Look at that, zero. So that is actually updated dynamically now. So we already have a function here that pushes a new item into our state. So now we can just go over to our cards because we have name and price already here. So we can import, again, you import use context from React and the context that you want to use, which we only have one right now card context. Okay. And then in here, what I want to do is say const. And what I'm going to import is that little function that we just made called add to cart equals to use context. And we pass down the card context. Cool. So now we can go on this diff here and say, Hey, when we click on this, or you can add it to the actual icon if you want to. When we click on this, run an arrow function that adds adds to the cart, and I want to pass in the name and the price. Actually, we don't need the curly brackets there, just name and price. And hit save. And that's that. So let's see if that works. Let's go over here to our components. I'm going to click on one. Look at that. Every time I click, it updates it. Tree four. See, we have four items. All right, that works. Now let's also output these items in our checkout. So let's go over to our checkout. And again, I'm just going to import create a use context from react and import our card context. And then here, I just want to output the items. So const items equals to use context card context. Okay. Cause we have all the logic hooked up here. All right. I'm just taking these items and outputting them. So here again, I'll just map over it. I already have the code here items map, and then I'm just going to output the name and the price of it and hit save. So there we go. Look at that. Boom. Fast t-shirt, fast sweater. So let's say we add a bunch of t-shirts. Uh, so I'm going to click on this a couple of times. Look at that, 23 t-shirts. And look at that, it outputs it right there. All right, so it's a super easy way uh, to just set up this file once with all your functions and your state, and then just import it via use context. Pass in the context to it, and then you have it available in any component you want it to. And that's as simple as it gets. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little episode on context. Check out developbyad.com if you want to learn more about web development. Check out all the awesome courses, the React course, animation course, and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.